So as stated in the title of this video, today we are going to test Genshin Impact, the latest version on these four phones. So we have the Galaxy A33 with Exynos 1280 chipset, which we have said that its performance is not good for gaming, but in today's video that is going to change. And then this is the Redmi Note 11 Pro 4G, I think, I can't remember the name because all of the phones look nearly identical and their specs are very similar. I forgot the specs, I think it's Helio G96 or something like that. I'll show it on the screen here. And then this one is the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Again, when it was released, we say that its gaming performance was kind of iffy and then they have a lot of updates to unlock the performance and whatnot. But today, we're going to test it too. And this is the Black Shark 4 Pro. I have specifically chosen the Black Shark 4 Pro because uh, we just did the gaming test of the Black Shark 5 and the Black Shark 5 Pro and said that its gaming performance was superb but that is mostly due to the newly updated version of Genshin Impact that enabled that level of performance without excessive heating. Okay. Without excessive heating. So if you want to watch the gaming test of these two phones, the Black Shark 5 and the Black Shark 5 Pro, then check it out down in the description below or at the top right corner here. So what I'm going to do is to test all of these four phones with the latest version of Genshin Impact. So we'll leave all these phones aside first and we'll start off with the Galaxy A33. So as we can see here, we are now in Genshin Impact. Okay. So as you can see, okay. so as you can see here, we are now in Genshin Impact and I have already turned on the GPU watch and then we also turn up the render resolution to 1920 by 864. And yeah, this is pretty much our standard gaming test for all Samsung phones. If you want to watch the original gaming test of the Galaxy A33, where we also show you how to turn on GPU watch and increase the render resolution, check it out at this top right corner here. So what I'm going to do now is to show you the gaming, this, this settings here. So by default, it comes in low. But you know what, since I've also enabled the alternate game performance management mode, I'm going to go for medium and then I'm going to go for 60 FPS and the GPU still doesn't work, but whatever. So as we can see here, the FPS is above 30, which is really good by the way. And let's just get into a fight and see how it works. Oh nope, so you can see the frame rate is dropping below 30 which is not good so I'm gonna change it to low and then again I'm gonna change it to 60. So what my idea of this video is to test what kind of new graphical setting that we need to use to reach 60 fps consistently. And as you can see now we're using low, the frame rate is definitely better. It's high 30s most of the time and low 30s at certain times when the frame rate dips. So let's just fly off again. Oh, luckily I didn't die there. So as we can see here, the frame rate is, yeah, hitting about 30, 40 ish at some times and the frame rate still dips to about 30, which is actually really good compared to what we had previously. So I think we have something to fight here, right? Yeah, we do. You know what, the frame rate is actually a lot better. At certain times, it did reach to low 30s, but I would still say it's much better compared to what we had previously, whereby this phone can only play Genshin Impact at the absolute lowest graphical settings and it still didn't reach 30 FPS. So, I am very impressed by the optimizations on both Samsung's side and also Genshin Impact, as in MiHoYo or HoYoVerse now as they are known, I'm not sure why they renamed themselves but yeah, the gaming performance is real solid now. And we can see the frame rate dropping below 30, I'm not sure why it did that but 
overall i would still say the gaming experience has improved drastically i kind of think that maybe if we use the absolute lowest graphical settings we can reach 60 fps now Frame rate continues to drop, not sure why, but yeah, that happened. Oh, now the frame rate is back up again. And what do we have now at the lowest graphical setting? We can still reach about 40 something FPS and oh, we can actually reach high, 50, high 40s, which is quite good. Yeah, it hovers about 40 FPS now if we're using the absolute lowest graphical settings. So I'm kind of impressed actually. And yes, that is the new okay. And yes, that is the new gaming performance for the Exynos 1280 on the Galaxy A33. And as you can see here, the performance improved drastically compared to what we had previously, thanks to the new Genshin Impact update version 2.7. So now we are done with this Galaxy A33. The next up is this phone. This is the Redmi Note 11 Pro 4G. I think that's the exact model. Again, I don't really know what's the exact model name because yeah, I just dealt with way too many Redmi phones during like two, three months ago. You know what? Let us check the specs then. Uh, hit to all specs. So this phone is the Helio G96 chipset, I model number is this, I will google what that means later, but yeah, Helio G96, 8GB of RAM. Okay, so now we are back at Genshin Impact and I absolutely forgot what settings this phone was using during our initial gaming test. But either way, as you can see now, uh, the default is still lowest for the Helio G96, which I think I use it at lowest at first, so we we'll just proceed with that and then we'll change it to 60 fps and see how much this meter can go when we are playing the game. Uh, initial impression, I think it is performing more or less the same as the Exynos 1280 on the Galaxy A33 that we have there. But uh, we'll need to test it a bit more. So let's get into a fight once more. Hmm, yeah, I think the frame rates are very similar to the Exynos 1280 that we tested just now. Uh, it reaches at about 30-ish, 40-ish FPS at these lowest graphical settings, which again is very consistent actually in terms of the performance that it has. Frame time is not the best, but yeah, that is only during asset loading when I'm changing characters and whatnot, but overall experience has improved a lot. So let me try this and see how things go, maybe? Oh, this is a bad idea. Oh, that was fast. So yeah, that's it for the Redmi Note 11 Pro 4G, I think. I can't remember the specs once again, but Overall, it improved a lot in terms of the consistency of frames, even at the lowest graphical settings. It definitely improved the performance as well. So we'll move on to the next phone, which is the Galaxy S22 Ultra, which is powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. So while the Galaxy S22 Ultra is doing this, I have a bit of explanation to do. So the Galaxy S22 Ultra, as you can see here, I've got a skin slapped on the back and as you can see here, yeah, it's not the best skin ever. I'm still using the Pitaka case, which is a really nice case. And our original gaming test of this video, actually we did two of them. 
The first one was when everyone said that Samsung throttle performance and whatnot. And then the second gaming test was done with the alternate game performance management mode turned on. So again, you can check it out at the top right corner here or down in the description as well. We did quite a lot of tests during that time, but today with Genshin Impact Update version 2.7, I actually discovered a very huge improvement in terms of performance for this game. It kind of puts the whole argument of Samsung phone is not made for gaming out of the window entirely because, yeah, let me show you. This is Genshin Impact and let me show you the graphical settings that I'm using. Everything is high. Let me just confirm with you once again. Highest and then I'm going to set it to 60 FPS. And as you can see, the GPU usage is at about 90-ish percent. It's not even hitting 100, which is good because we are mostly at 60 fps all the time so just let me go somewhere and get into a fight uh, for this phone i'm still using it in the english voice because i have not downloaded the japanese voice so i'm gonna lower the volume a little bit so as you can see when we are running around here we are still hitting about 49 50 ish fps which is really good again i have tuned up the uh, what is that again? The render resolution to 1853 by 864 and I am also using the alternate game performance mode right now and yeah, the performance is in a fight 40-ish FPS Real good, so no complaints there because we didn't get any frame drops Oh god, I really shouldn't play and talk at the same time, I can't concentrate But luckily the enemies are easy and still left one more And we're done. I should also highlight that I have a lot of different apps still being used at the background and I would presume they do affect performance because uh, the Galaxy A33 and the Redmi phone that we tested earlier is literally a review phone that I only use for testing and there are no background apps running. So keep that into consideration when we are looking at the gaming test of this phone. And that's it, that's pretty much the gaming performance of the Galaxy S22 Ultra after the Genshin Impact version 2.7 update. There are a lot of optimizations done and as you can see here, the GPU utilization has dropped. I presume that is to lower the heat a little bit but yeah, we are still getting quite good frame rates overall. I wouldn't complain much because it didn't stutter and it also yeah it did start quite a bit just now but overall i would still say it's decent it improved a lot that's what i'm trying to say does that make sense i hope so so anyway yeah galaxy s22 ultra those people who say that this phone is not meant for gaming well maybe it's not the best in terms of gaming but you can certainly play genshin impact at the highest graphical settings now so let me just take out this bunch of dudes and before I end the test for the Galaxy S22 Ultra, the phone didn't feel hot and yeah, that do remember that I still have a case and also a skin slapped on it so it will definitely affect the thermal performance of this phone but the gaming performance is still fantastic so let's end this. And finally we have the Black Shark 4 Pro. Now this phone is still using the Snapdragon 888 and it is known to be very hot and also doesn't perform well in Genshin Impact when it heats up. So with this new Genshin Impact update version 2.7, it actually improved a lot. It doesn't get hot while it's still able to run at full graphical settings, the maximum graphical settings at 60fps. So let's get into the game and show you exactly what kind of experience that I'm talking about. I'm gonna use the highest graphical settings at 
60fps because this is a flagship smartphone and it's supposed to be handled that without any issues. So as we can see here, it is very smooth, again 60fps. Okay, so we can finally find something to fight. So we can see here the gaming performance is definitely mm, not as consistent as the uh, what's that again the phones of the Black Shark 5 series. So we did experience some frame drops, but yeah, it's still very good actually. Uh, better than the Galaxy S22 Ultra for sure. But that is also because this phone is literally having a much more aggressive thermal limit. And uh, yeah, gaming performance is definitely going to be good on this phone. So let me just get into this fight as well. And as you can see, how's the gaming performance like? And yeah, the gaming performance of the Black Shark 4 Pro with the update of version 2.7 of Genshin Impact and we can see the temperature is still slowly rising but it's definitely not as hot as the 50-ish degrees Celsius when we first tested Genshin Impact on the Black Shark 4 Pro. And if you want to learn more of our initial test and how much it has improved, just watch our video at this top right corner here. Yeah, overall I'm impressed actually by this update. It's a huge update for sure, but once you updated the game performance is actually improved drastically on whatever phone that you're playing at. So as you can see in today's video, I've tested Genshin Impact version 2.7 on these four phones. So the Galaxy A33 with the Exynos 1280 chipset is considered a kind of not so good in terms of performance initially, but now it is actually very playable. The Redmi Note 11 Pro 4G with the Helio G96 chipset is still more or less the same in terms of graphical setting that we can use but the frame rate definitely got a lot better and the Galaxy S22 Ultra it is also a very a much better performer compared to when I first tested the gaming performance and the Black Shark 4 Pro actually got the biggest improvement because the Snapdragon Triple Eight chipset didn't heat up as much but it still manages to deliver that smooth consistent 60 fps throughout our gameplay at the highest graphical setting. So yeah, Genshin Impact version 2.7 is a fantastic update. And I have to say that our previous gaming tests on all phones are pretty much invalidated. Maybe just use those gaming tests but then add a few frames into those tests to more or less estimate or guesstimate how it would perform today. So yeah, these are all the four phones that I still have with me today. Actually, I do have more phones, but I think this four phone that I have is the most effective in terms of its category of devices. So yeah, that's it. That's all we have to share with you today. This is going to be a long video, but I'm going to cut it down real short. And that's it. If you like this kind of content, do give us a thumbs up and I will see you guys in our next video where we review both the Black Shark 5 and the Black Shark 5 Pro. So stay tuned for that and we'll see you guys there. Goodbye.